Namaste and welcome to the Essence of Knowledge weekly meeting. This meeting is held on Telegram every Saturday and is a part of the Essence of Knowledge program which is a free and online program for the students of the Path of Knowledge. In this meeting we try to answer the questions of the participants, clear their doubts. We hold tests and uh, I try to help the students regarding their practices in the different steps of the program anybody who is interested in joining this program can visit gyanmark.guru and register for the program it is free and online today we are going to start with a test of anurikta so you will get uh, 10 questions and uh, if you score 50% or more then you will be sent to the step number 4 of the program and after your questions and answers will take in the questions of other people in the meeting these are your questions in the chat take your time all the best uh, so, so the first question is path of knowledge brings us back home true or false false we are already at home i think uh, we don't need to find our home or we don't need to go anywhere so i think this is false i i don't think I, this is false sorry which quality is most important for a seeker curiosity uh desire for liberation desire to learn open minded ready to mend old ways of old old ways of oh, sorry sorry old ways of his life i think these are some important qualities that are needed for a seeker how to know without direct experience you cannot know without direct experience this is a very important you know point you cannot know without it why is why is unchanging true can i take one minute break to think about it i think the answer of this question is whatever that changes is not true because it is changing so how it can be true so i think whatever that never changes is true true so and knowing is the same as not knowing true or false i think they are same existence require an experiencer to experience itself true or false yes it is for it is true sorry how can the experiencer know itself with a form it can know itself with a form it needs some some kind of form to know itself without it it won't be able to know itself who must re- who must remain in awareness ego should i think ego should remain in awareness why is existence called non dual but not one i think it is non dual but not one non uh, it is one already i think which topic is best for daily contemplation spiritual any spiritual topic uh related to self related i think any spiritual topic is best for daily contemplation okay very good attempt by anurikta here you get 5 uh, and 1/2 out of 10 which is slightly a lower score but uh, i think it is enough to continue to the step number 4 of the program however you need to polish your knowledge a little bit more my suggestion will be to go through all the lessons again there are only 20 and go through the important ones again uh, your initial uh, knowledge about the path itself qualities and all and that is okay that is perfect but a uh, little bit deeper knowledge is lacking and uh, you need to practice answering in a uh, little bit more detail not in one word or one sentence answers should be complete so continue in the program now there is no writing now there is no exam but uh, you will need to 
send me weekly reports from the program page itself in the step number 4 there is a facility to send weekly reports and will observe you for 3 months which means uh, i'll see how the awareness practice is going for 3 months after that you can do it on your own after that i think everything is optional so the uh, difficult part of the program is over congratulations however i i feel that you need to uh, revise the content and yes uh, keep contemplating keep answering that these example questions that are uh, sent every day in our group keep discussing that will uh, give you a good practice probably people they face this kind of test for the first time and they become little bit afraid nervous so they cannot say too much in that in the test live test but it's okay it's fine we are going to discuss the answers here meanwhile if anybody has any question they can type it here number 1 question was path of knowledge brings us back home true or false and she said we are already home so i gave her half marks because uh, yes this is true we are already at home nowhere to go nothing to do all that we need to do is remove the ignorance that we are somewhere else we are lost or uh, we need to go somewhere this is ignorance and the path of knowledge simply removes this and we find that we are already at the ultimate place this was a tricky question but uh, you can say true or false both in the answer and then you can justify the answer false is also a correct answer because many people do not know where they are many people are searching so that's why there is a path that's why it is called a path how do we come back home through knowledge that's why it's called path of knowledge number 2 was which quality is most important for a seeker so here she gave a detailed answer although not that detailed but she counted many qualities so i gave her full marks number 3 how to know without direct experience and here also she got full marks because even though the answer was short that we cannot know without direct experience it is not possible and direct experience means that which we are witnessing directly which is not told to us by some other person or which we are not reading from a book or any other medium uh, that will be called uh, information so that is not knowledge that which is witnessed directly known directly experience directly is direct experience and then it becomes knowledge only when combined with uh, logic and intellect actually there is another answer for this question that uh, there is a way to know without direct experience and that is logic that is logic that's why we have two means of knowledge one is direct experience second is logic and uh, logic can tell us something without experiencing it directly For example if you see sugar you can tell that it is sweet without actually eating it eating will be the direct experience of sweetness but you can use simple logic that sugar is sweet so if i eat it it will be sweet like this sometimes we can use logic and uh, know for sure 100% that uh, what is the truth or it can be converted into knowledge logic can be converted into knowledge however there is a catch that you cannot use logic on imaginary things logic is founded on direct experience itself so in the example of sugar how do we know that sugar is sweet without eating it because the past experience is there because it was already experienced in the past a very common example appears in all the scriptures of path of knowledge that uh, by looking at the smoke we can say there is fire if if there is a smoke in some distance we can say somebody is cooking or there is a fire there and there is that is uh, a good example of logic inference and uh, but how do we know that there is fire because the past experience with fire and smoke is already impressed on our memory it is a logical relation logical connection is already made there and so the conclusion is correct only because there was past experience so this kind of logic is called sound logic which is based on past experience 
So there are two ways to know direct experience and logic. Ultimately, everything comes down to direct experience. Number four, why is unchanging true? And uh, she did not get any mark here. The answer was wrong. So it is very clear why it is true. We have assumed this kind of criterion. Remember the criterion of truth. We have adopted it. It is not found in existence. In existence, nothing is true, nothing is false. So that's why you need to go back and check these chapters. Where, wherever there are, there is incomplete knowledge in you, go back and listen to those chapters again. Because obviously you are not going to do this uh, program again and again in your life. Uh, this is a good opportunity for you to finish it forever. So there is nothing true in existence, nothing false in existence. Both are seen and it is completely subjective and arbitrary to call something as true and something as false. However, if you want to go to the last mile, if you want to go to the last place, ultimate place in the existence, then your criterion must be very, very strong. How is that decided? Again, on direct experience and logic, we see that things that change are not reliable. They do not take us to the final answer. So uh, that is why unchanging is true. A good example is uh, clay and uh, objects of the clay. Suppose you want to find the truth of all these objects. You can uh, start your investigation. And today it is appearing as a clay pot. Tomorrow it is appearing as a flower pot, clay. Next day it appears as a statue and uh, so on. It Sometimes it becomes brick, sometimes it becomes just a pile of clay, a regular shape. So which one is the true shape of the clay? You are trying to find the truth here. Your intel intellect will say, well, it can change into anything. So which one is the truth? What is the truth in the clay? And then you can easily conclude that I want the essential thing, not the changing things. Only the essential thing in the clay, objects of the clay, can be called true. And that is where the nature comes in picture, true nature or essential nature. And obviously the intellect will say the clay itself is the truth of all the objects. Because it is the one thing that never changes among all the clay objects. So this is the notion or concept or idea of truth. And why do we use this criteria? That unchanging will be the true uh, truth. Because we want to find the essential nature of myself. In spirituality, we are investigating myself, the self. There is no other thing in spirituality. Nothing else is important. And we go on using this criterion on everything that we find. What is it that is never changing? And we never find anything. All experiences come out to be false or changing. Now the intellect says, yes, there is something which is unchanging. That is the one to which everything appears. Although it is not something, it is not an object, it is not another experience. It is mysterious. That is called experiencer. If you go on investigating, you will find that the existence, the whole existence has only one essence and it is again the experiencer. There is nothing else. So if I want to call myself as the experiencer, that means I am the whole existence. And this, this is the biggest discovery of humankind. This is the biggest discovery of the humanity. This is known since many thousand years and it is unchallenged. This is called ultimate truth for this reason. If you relax your criteria for true and false, you will find something else which is absolutely okay. That means you are on some other path. That means you are satisfied with something else. My brain is the truth. My memories are true. Yes, perfectly. Because it doesn't really matter because ultimately there is nothing which is true. It is our selection. It is our decision to define it like this. So I think this is the complete answer. This is how everybody should answer on the path of knowledge. That is why we discuss the questions after the test because I want to demonstrate how to answer in the exam. However, you don't need to explain it in so much detail. So before we go to the next question, Karish is saying, 
can you please uh, perhaps shed light on how and why people get trans uh, some can evoke this where it appears deities inhabit the host for short while during this the direct experience seems unknown to the host how can logic and direct experience be applied to help answer this so first thing is that it is all an illusion in illusion anything can appear how and why these questions are completely meaningless because anything can appear now you go down in the illusion one step down and you see that this never happens to everybody this ha- never happens every day this is not a normal event it is a paranormal event many people have witnessed these things many people have this experience of being possessed by deities and so on you cannot say that it is false for them it is truth it is their experience so it is very easily explained by the unity of the mind in our model of the illusion we say that everything is mental uh, we then invent a concept of memory which is called universal memory and everything is simply forms appearing in this universal memory including the host or the person who is affected and uh, whatever there is which is affecting they are all in the same memory the memory is non physical non mental and uh, a detail uh, explanation of all these things memories and uh, mind and layers are given in uh, the series on vibronics which is on my english channel there is a series of videos called vibronics which means the study of vibrations so we say it's all vibrations in the existence which are apparent or illusory and that model is used to explain many things and this kind of uh, event can be explained by uh, the model of the vibrations or memory memory is nothing but uh, organized vibration so because there is only one memory it is interconnected overlapping so due to resonance the connection happens between different parts of the memory remember everything is memory so there are only apparent divisions in the memory there are some structures or some entities what is entity that is also defined in that model that are more evolved than humans they they can manipulate things in the memory that is called power spiritual uh, occult power so because it is all one it is possible to influence anything from anywhere and uh, why does the host does not know it because the whole memory is taken over by something else that is why it is called possession you possess that thing the human structure human is also multilayered structure so obviously the nothing remains here who can organize the memories or there can be memories but the experience is so foreign it is so new that nothing is remembered nothing can be recalled so model of the memory is very logical it can be proven using direct experience it is simply science scientific method can be employed establish that model you can go and study it it is published for everybody and it is formally a part of tantra bodhi now in tantra bodhi you will get more information about the different entities that are in the universal memory so if i start explaining it will take many hours so i recommend tantra bodhi so let's go to next question in the exam unknowing is the same as not knowing true or false and she did not get any marks she said it is same but it is very clear that not knowing has little bit uh, confusing meanings not knowing can mean ignorance i don't know this is not knowing also known as ignorance although ignorance more accurately means uh, having beliefs or assumptions that are not logical that is ignorance but in common language not knowing also means ignorance but unknowing is not a word in common language unknowing is never used commonly probably it is not there in dictionary also who knows so unknowing is a state where there is nothing more to know everything has been known and that is called agnostic state he says nothing remains to know and nothing can be known now the final truth has been known the final knowledge is here beyond this it is unknowable 
and that state can be called unknowing another word is agnostic state so it is not same as not knowing the agnostic will claim to know nothing agnostic will say i don't know anything that is simply a poetic way of saying that nothing remains to know now and whatever i came to know cannot be known further it is a state of complete absence of ignorance so it is uh, correct to say that no i don't know anything because there is no ignorance also there is no no knowledge also it is freed from ignorance so yes uh, we should dis- differentiate between unknowing and not knowing even though sometimes it is said that nothing is known but uh, it means the ignorance has been destroyed number 6 existence requires an experiencer to experience itself true or false and uh, she said yes it requires something to experience itself now i gave her 0.5 i mean half marks because existence does not require anything it has no requirements it is okay with knowing or not knowing or experiencing not experiencing there is it is completely without any qualities so requirement uh, uh, is will be an imposition on the existence secondly existence is experiencer they are not different they are not uh, two it is one one and the same thing so there are two assumptions in this question but there is no experience without the experiencer that is also true however it will never happen but logically at the level of duality you can say yes we need the experiencer for there to be an experience they are never found separately so the answer is very tricky although the question is all totally wrong but how to answer it so you will need to explain a lot and obviously that is a difficult thing to do so i gave her half marks because yes it is it can be interpreted in many many ways this is a difficult question so i am not going to explain more obviously everybody knows the answer uh, number 7 how can the experiencer know itself and again uh, she got half mark because the experiencer never knows itself the experiencer has no need to know itself knowledge is uh, interrelations in memory an experiencer has no memory it is simply a witness of memory experiencer is witness of uh, knowledge witness of ignorance witness of unknowing witness of anything else innocence whatever you whatever states of memory or states of knowledge are there it simply witnesses everything who knows itself and that is this body mind machine human being person creature whatever you want to call this thing and that comes to know what i am and then it is destroyed because that thing is no more real or true knowing what you are means destruction of what you were what whatever you thought you are that gets destroyed but nothing really changes isn't it uh, only the sh- position of the i shifts ego you can say ego and that is destroyed so experiencer never knows itself there is no need there is no knowledge there is no ignorance and this is also a difficult question this is also a very tricky question but poetically it can be said that a form is taken for there to be knowledge that's what she said she got half mark number 8 who must remain in awareness correct answer full marks not the experiencer and not the body obviously body cannot remain in awareness that which was unaware should remain in awareness and that is something <laughs> whatever remains after knowledge there is something still there that can be called ego and it has a tendency to again identify back with the body mind or anything else it is only a thought and that should be brought back again in the knowledge you should bring it back again and again in the remembrance of true nature that must remain aware that must remain in awareness you can call it ego yes number 9 why is existence called non dual but not one and she did not get any marks here it was a uh, wrong answer it is called non dual because the oneness is never known the oneness cannot be experienced all that can be done is it can be shown that it is not two but whenever it is known it is known in dual form because then there is nowhere and known it is already dual 
there is experience and experiencer so already dual what is known is it is not dual that is the only knowledge possible so knowledge is always negative it was told in your program in the beginning never forget this thing positive knowledge is ignorance negative knowledge is knowledge knowledge of the truth so not one the existence is non dual but in ordinary language or sometimes poetic language we say it is one there is nothing wrong in saying as long as you know that the one will never be found you are that one and that cannot be known by any means it is unknowable sometimes we say oneness knowledge of oneness like this but uh, there is an understanding behind that that uh, it is not an experience of any kind oneness is not an experience just like emptiness just like existence just like experiencing these are all names of that which is and you are that so answer is tricky question is very difficult however it is a very um, famous question why advait why not uh, simply say one why it is called non dualism instead of oneism there is a reason everybody should think about this meditate contemplate on this find out what other teachers are saying about this so everybody must know because you are studying non dualism you should know why not it is called non dual why not simply count it as one because it is not countable also it is zero so number 10 which topic is best for daily contemplation full marks she said anything related to spirituality anything related to self that's perfect answer if you are contemplating on something worldly then probably your practice is not going well that cannot be called practice so you should set aside some time where you should not think anything worldly only spiritual and the best topic is yourself that is the experiencer that is the brahman that is the existence non dual existence true nature contemplate on it if you become habitual of this if you make it your practice you will see that you are automatically getting all the answers like karish was saying how is it possible we are one the memory where all the knowledge resides is exactly here and now your practice of contemplation daily regular practice will establish you in that field of knowledge it is one it is here and now that field of knowledge is called guru field so we try to put you in contact with the guru field that day i was telling you how can i get answers to all the questions and i don't seem to have any doubt probably others have doubt that he is wrong but i am never doubtful it is because i am in contact with that field i have done contemplation for so many years yes it is possible that sometimes i get something wrong answers are you know it is human nature to make mistakes but uh, you will find that uh, your regular contemplation practice or uh, introspection will put you in contact with the field of knowledge which is called the guru field after few years you don't need to um, sit separately you don't need to take out time you can uh, you can get all the answers while you are walking talking eating whatever even in sleep even in dreams that is called a permanent connection with the guru field guru field is the guru this this human being is a medium and the same phenomena here which karish was talking about phenomena we cannot call it call it position it is a direct transmission because everything is one so either you can get uh, influences from deities or um, demons whatever dead people or you can train yourself to remain connected with the guru field which is the real guru so a combination of contemplation with awareness will give you this kind of supernatural power it is a power actually so this is not told in the path of knowledge it is um, a separate practice that is why we talk about it in uh, step number 7 step number 7 you will get an introduction to guru field and if you have you have already established yourself in regular con- contemplation you will reap the benefits contemplate on spiritual topics so this is uh, the questions and answers i hope everybody enjoyed it i hope um, everybody uh, benefited from these discussions continue your program continue practicing bhupen is asking 
if the existence which includes everything is zero dimensional then what is the logic of saying it is infinite in nature that is how a zero dimensional entity be infinite very good question so the word zero dimensional is metaphorical we use it simply to convey to you that do not think of existence as extended in length width height or anything else it is not like space it is not like an object how to say this thing metaphorically or uh, it is called upman in sanskrit by the word zero dimensional so you stop thinking about the existence as existing somewhere or is big like large no it is not like this now why do we say infinite precisely because of this that it has no limits it is because if something is extending in length width or what time anything you can imagine that means it will be limited somewhere that means you measured it it is this big but you cannot say this about existence so how do we convey this thing about existence we say it is infinite you will never find a limit of where it ends and starts because that is uh, that, that is never seen and it is shown in your basic analysis of the existence then in the advanced analysis we introduce these concepts of infinity and uh, emptiness zero dimensional you can also say it is empty same meaning two words so only zero dimensional can be infinite <laughs> this is the this is the paradox that uh, zero can be infinity if it is something in between not zero not infinity that means it will be limited another good metaphor is a blank canvas on which you can draw any picture how many pictures are possible on a blank canvas blank screen and anybody will say infinite why because it is blank now there is a potential to draw anything infinite pictures what if you draw one picture there now already some parts are black some parts are blue some parts are taken so the amount of pictures will reduce i mean assuming that you need to draw a full picture now it is not infinite because it's already something so the existence is empty and that is why there is infinite possibility to be anything this is the biggest mystery there is nothing more mysterious than the existence itself and that is you you are that existence so emptiness and infinity they mean the same thing in in, in the terminology of non dualism it is not like uh, physics or mathematics these words have different meaning so obviously a newcomer will open the dictionary okay infinite means very large no <laughs> uh, terms are defined precisely in philosophy not in dictionary and the terms are defined precisely by the guru not by anybody else so always refer to the definition in the program do not assume meanings uh, yourself or do not look for meaning somewhere else it is in the program now once you know the meaning verify it is it really infinite is it really zero dimensional according to the meaning that is presented in the philosophy is it really empty is there infinite possibility which this word is suggesting and is it really possible for emptiness to be infinite these are your questions for contemplation although we have already done the contemplation in the basic and advanced analysis of the existence you can uh, listen to that again and do your own contemplation do not simply believe whatever is told there however you should know the meanings of the words otherwise there is no communication so why is space infinite although it appears isn't it space appears in existence the existence does not appear in space but what kind of space appears illusory space you can make any amount of it and therefore it is infinite how much time can appear in existence it is timeless it is eternal so any amount of time can appear here in this way no matter what parameter you use it is always infinite how much matter can appear in existence infinite how many creatures can appear infinite did existence become something when all these things appear the answer is no it is simply an illusion there is no substance out of which everything is made it is like a dream so it always remains empty it's always zero so do not confuse the word dimension with the uh, meter kilometer no it is simply a word showing that do not 
try to think of existence in terms of your everyday experience it is not your everyday experience you cannot even experience it you can deny the experiences you can destroy the assumptions whatever remains is truly mysterious that is you another thing is you cannot call it entity existence is not an entity so choose your words very very carefully like i said in the program somewhere i think that even if you you add one word in the existence it becomes wrong it is not an entity definition is it is that which is if you remove that also then silence silence is the perfect explanation of the existence it's also called brahman in sanskrit entities are found in the existence as illusions i think um, today's questions are over i hope everybody is preparing for their test whoever has done the verification and you can take the help of uh, quiz knowledge quiz which is on the website or you can take help of other people who have already passed the test so i'll ask neelam to help these people help the newcomers it is like a service you ask them some questions get it from uh, the quiz or somewhere else and uh, do not worry about what they answer if the answer is wrong right does not matter just give them some practice so i'll start sending people to you and that will improve the scoring and it will also help you and it will it will happen very infrequently like once in a month there will be somebody so take a mock test and dummy test so anybody who is ready for test can contact neelam and here we are going to end today's meeting thank you everybody for attending to this meeting i'll see you next time namaste